So today I want to talk about a severe allergic reaction, otherwise known as anaphylactic shock, and I want to talk about what we can do in the wilderness to mitigate this reaction. Um, sometimes people are severely allergic to things like uh, shellfish, peanuts, latex, bee stings, and their doctor, their physician will prescribe them an EpiPen. It's a, it's a self-injecting pen full of epinephrine, which is the same thing as adrenaline, something your body makes naturally, and that will help to open up their airway and try to mitigate some of the effects of the anaphylactic shock. What do we need to know about anaphylactic reaction? Um, we should know what it looks like. About 90% of people who go into anaphylaxis exhibit hives, you know, some sort of like spotting on their face, their neck, um, and maybe also on the area that came in contact with the allergen. Um, although a lot of these reactions, something like two thirds of them, um, the actual contact is unknown. You know, so people at some point they eat something, it's got something in it they're allergic to, but they don't know exactly what it was that had that thing in it. Um, so spots, hives on the face is a really good way to tell. And in most of the reactions, you're also going to see some sort of wheeze, wheezing or you know, difficulty breathing as the throat actually begins to swell up. And that's our primary concern because as the throat swells, that can choke the person and it can kill them. Um, in an urban environment, you're pretty much gonna wanna call 911 for this. If you have an EpiPen and they're having difficulty breathing, you know, the pen is prescribed to them, then they can go ahead and use it. Um, in a wilderness environment, when you're an hour or more away from help though, you're gonna need to use the EpiPen. Um, so one thing I would advise is wait to use it until you need to use it. The EpiPen only lasts for about 10 or 15 minutes, and it's not guaranteed to fix the reaction. In some people, um, it subdues the, the reaction permanently, and other people, it just fixes the symptoms, and they need an antihistamine on top of that. Um, so what does an EpiPen look like? How do we use it? These are the main things I want to talk about. I have with me an actual EpiPen. You know, when you get them from a pharmacy, they come in this yellow case. Um, so I'm going to open the case up. And when you pull out the case, or you pull out of the case, you'll find this sort of safety tube that it comes in. Um, and then inside the tube, this is a live, legit EpiPen. One way you can tell is there's a window on it where you can actually view the uh, product. One thing I like to do frequently when I teach classes is before I pull out an EpiPen, I'll ask at the beginning of this sort of talk, you know, who amongst my students has a severe allergy, and it's, you know, it's, it's fairly common that someone in the room will have a severe allergy, and often they'll have an EpiPen prescribed to them, and then I'll ask, do you have the pen with you? Very few people have the pen with them. And then I'll ask, can you take out the pen, and can we see if it's expired? I have never had a student who has a severe allergy, have an EpiPen, have it with them, and have it be in date. So this is a fairly critical point to make. Um, it's not just enough to know that you have a severe allergy, you need to get the EpiPen and then you need to keep it in date. Uh, about 1,500 people throughout the United States die every single year of anaphylaxis and for most of those people an EpiPen and then immediate medical treatment would fix that. So you can tell the pen is on in date because if you look on the pen it will say the lot number and it will say the uh, expiration date of that. These pens have a half-life of roughly a month from expiration. There was a study done in the 90s that mixed a few hundred pens together and then um, found the inverse correlation. And Roughly it's about a month. So what that means is the 0.3 milligram adult dosage when it's a month expired is closer to 0.15 which is the child dose. And when it's two months expired it's half of 0.15 and when it's three months expired it's half of that and so on and so on. So the point is that if your EpiPen is more than two or three months expired it is probably worthless as far as treating the person. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the live pen back in the tube. I'm gonna set that down and then I'm gonna pick up my EpiPen trainers. The reason I'm telling you I'm doing that is I want to be very very careful about holding the trainers in my hand and not the live pen because um, I don't want to stab myself. So one way you can tell a pen is in date is if it looks like this with the black tip it's probably no longer in date. This is the old style. Um, I was happy to see that finally um, EpiPen brand injectors switch to this sort of orange tip style which is a little more obvious which direction is the dangerous end. So when using an EpiPen there are a couple things you need to know. Um, one thing that you're going to want to know is that you should never put, never, never, never put your thumb over the end. You should never hold an EpiPen like this. It should always be held with your thumb off the end. That way if you get the pen backwards you're not resting your thumb over the dangerous part. Um, the tricky thing about an EpiPen is that there's a hole in one end and then when you pull the safety cap there's a hole in the other end. So one of those holes doesn't do anything, the other one has a needle behind it. 
And it can be sort of tricky in an emergency situation to remember what is what, and people get confused. So as a general rule, never put your thumb over the end. That way, if you get it backwards, you go to inject it like this, you don't have issues. Um, so that's one really good tip. Um, the other good tip, of course, is that the EpiPen should be in date so that you're actually injecting worthwhile medication into them. Um, and then beyond that, the instructions are actually printed on the pen. So if you forget how to use it, you can always read. Um, I'm going to go ahead and demo it for you real quick, and I'll use the new version of the pen. So on the back is this sort of um, safety cap. The pen is theoretically not armed until we pull this. So I'm going to pull this, sort of like the pin on a grenade. Now the pen is armed. And I'm going to put the pen in my, well, this is not my dominant hand, but for most people it is. Um, and the whole idea is that the pen is going to go into the leg between the knee and the hip, you know, in intramuscular. It can go through clothing, that's fine. But one thing we're going to want to be careful to do is that there's nothing in your pocket that could be dangerous. So for instance, I have a uh, transmitter for my microphone in my left pocket. That's why I'm using my right hand to do this. Um, so you want to check real quick, make sure you're not stabbing into anything plastic like a cell phone or into a wallet or anything like that. Um, it goes in a 90 degree angle between the hip and the, or between the hip and the knee. And then it stays in for 10 seconds. And you don't have to get a big wind up. All you need is a sort of short little burst. So basically like that, hold it, count to 10, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Then remove the pen, massage the affected site. And if this was a live EpiPen, at this point you would see a needle sticking out of the end. And I would advise you to go ahead and check that window where you could see the medication. Before the medication should have been clear, it shouldn't have been cloudy, there shouldn't be anything floating in it. And now the medication should be gone and the window should now partially be obscured by the plunger as it's shifted inside the pen. So that's one way to know the medication actually left is you'll be able to see a part of the plunger. Just to recap, don't use the pen until you need to use it. You know, you only have one pen, maybe two if your doctor is willing to prescribe two. Um, so first thing you do if you have an allergen exposure is take antihistamines. That's the main thing you want to do. You know, wait to use the pen until it's absolutely critical. Uh, stabbing yourself in the leg is probably enough of a disincentive that you're already going to be on this sort of track of thinking. Um, when it comes time to use the pen, go ahead and use it. Um, and to recap that, main thing is don't put your thumb over the end. Check to make sure the pen is in date. Uh, and then when you stab the pen into yourself, um, or if you assist someone using theirs, it needs to stay in for 10 seconds. Um, so good luck, and hopefully you don't ever have to use an EpiPen.